Let's have it. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are listening to Frame of Reference coming together. It's uh, me, Raul LaBrush. And uh, who are you again, sir? I, 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 why can't I remember uh, your name? Ed, Antoine Hallman Sr. Oh, yeah, that's right. Antoine, that is your name. I'm glad you remember your name. I just, I, you know, help me, Antoine. I cannot figure out a way to segue from I'm Raul LaBrush. Maybe we just need to... I'd say, if I say Raul Abresh, you just right away say, I'm Anton, and I'm Antoine Hallman. Or if you say, I'm Anton, I just remember saying, I'm Raul Abresh. Would that work? Yeah, it'll fi- we'll figure it out, man. Just, okay. uh, yeah. you know, just, just, yep. <laughs> We're still new at this. I mean, what we've been doing this for almost, what, four or five months or something like that, I think? Yeah, it's like a, probably like our 15th, 16th episode, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something, something around there, which is, yeah, man. Just, I mean, that means we got 16 hours or so, maybe more involved in talking with each other and the good news is we are still talking to each other i think i you know we haven't said oh man what the hell is he think he's talking about (laughs) whatever happens (laughs) with most people i I can't think of many people i could have a 16-hour conversation with can you so uh no no (laughs) well my my wife you know but yeah but those are sometimes you have to have them right (laughs) i guess we have to have those used to but uh so we were talking beforehand we were actually gonna we kind of wanted to hit on the black lives matter some more but i mean we need to hit on that as well as everything else we've talked to up until this point but uh we started talking about the big s yes the big S, and I don't mean safety, I don't mean socialism, I'm not talking about any other S than sex, and the impact that sex has on our world today, and I, I think there's a different perspective of sex. Um, I, I can start out from things that I've heard, things that I, I know are believed by people from my side of the racial spectrum or skin color, let's say skin color spectrum, okay, that sex in the African-American community is much more promiscuous than it is in the white community. That, you know, the, that, you know, black people have kids, you know, because it gives them more of a financial advantage because they can collect more AFDC or whatever they're calling welfare for, for families these days. It seems like that program changes regularly. Anyways, um, that, uh, that to me fundamentally is disrespectful because it doesn't equate the humanity of the situation to the reality of the situation. Are there people that collect more? Is it possible to collect more aid for family dependent children if they have more kids? Of course it is. Each of those kids is worth a certain amount of money and the government recognizes that it costs money to raise them. Um, But the quote unquote, you know, welfare queen or whatever, you know, people want to categorize that, uh, that that is not by any means the majority. That's a small, you know, look at the statistics. Don't don't just believe that, you know, that's a thing that gets you pissed off. So you're going to spread it around. Um, The statistics do not support that as being the reason black people or people of color in general have a lot of babies. Um, it's more about, you know, what you were talking about earlier, you know, our view towards sexuality, our view towards, um, our, our primal, you know, it is, I mean, the <laughs> little known secret in the, the, the biblical community is back in old Testament days, there was a temple brothel. There was a temple prostitute, um, that was available outside of the places of worship. So, now, whether that was every community, the, the Bible doesn't say. But it's one of the reasons that one of the central characters, and I'll let you read it and figure it out, you know, that uh, he was uh, convicted of the fact that he was responsible for a woman that had been married to one of his sons and was no longer alive. And she, she very much, and very rightfully so, tried to convince him that he, he needed to take responsibility for her. You know, she she didn't have any other means of supporting herself, so she asked for him to please take care of her, and he didn't want anything to do with that. Um, so, so she con- convinced or you know got a, a an idea that she would pose as a temple prostitute, and in the process of that, she collected, I believe, a ring and uh, one other piece of his personal possessions. 
uh, that somehow she was able to get away from it. I forget that part of the story, but um, basically that was used then as evidence down the road. She veiled herself in a way that he couldn't see who she was, but he had sex with her. And, you know, she, uh, she was able then to, I, I think, if I remember it, maybe you remember this story, Antoine, and how she then was pregnant and uh, came to him and said, you know, you're the father of this baby now. And he said, you know, give me a break. How could that possibly be? And she showed him then his signet ring and the other. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah of course, I'm, I'm, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. The story you're talking about and, of course, what it was is uh, the young lady that posed herself as a prostitute. She was actually the uh, wife of one of his sons, but his son died before they had children. And so, so she you know, needed she a child. Did, okay. Okay. To continue she, his lineage. Okay. Right. And so she, what she did, she posed herself as a prostitute. And of course, uh, the man, he came into a town, uh, he didn't have any provision to pay her. So he gave her something to hold right. until he came back. And then of course uh, she came and then she told him about you know, the thing that he had given her. I'm trying to think of the name, I could, but I know the story, yes. And it was a fairly prominent character within biblical history. And uh, the reason I tell that story, too, is because it tells you something about our recognition of the importance of sexuality and our, you know, our recognition as men, the need to provide a means for you know, satisfying those desires, right? They, they recognize that. So much so that a temple prostitute was an acceptable provision. And I, being a theater person, I, just, I have this you know, way of thinking about things. It's like, you know, imagine if today we were going to church and we said to our, our wife, okay, honey, you and the kids go ahead. I'm just going to stop here with Bertha and you know, we're going to, you know, or you know, Janie or you know, fire, whatever. And you know, I, just, I got a little something to take care of. He said, and you know, I'll just be a couple minutes. And the wife turns back and says, yeah, with you, it'd be like 35 seconds. You know, I mean, can you imagine what that would be like today if we continue to do that? But it was a part of the whole process of religiosity at one point. It was. So let's, let's deal with the reality of where this thing comes from, how far back it goes. And instead of just, you know, brushing it off as, a, well, they're just promiscuous or they're, they're just, you know, whatever, they don't care. Well, you know, yeah. It probably you, you need some education about the importance of when you take your when I put it out there, when you pull your zipper down, you better be in a position to be able to support the possibility of what might happen, or you know even if you're doing protection that that still may not protect you in every instance as it doesn't um, take responsibility for that and marriage, hopefully provides an opportunity for that child to have some protection and for that family to have some protection of surviving after that life is brought into the world. That's the core of it. So if we don't recognize, for whatever reasons, whether it's, you know, I have the right to do whatever I want, sexuality is part of who I am, I need to be able to explore that, okay, all right, no one's denying that. But again, with our, I am really big on this. We have rights, yes, but every single right you have carries with it a responsibility. I have the right to protect yeah. myself and my family. But if I shoot somebody in what I perceive as being a threat to my family, I now have a responsibility for that action. I do, whether I can justify it or not. And that's what this particular issue, sex, is not about the physical act with, for some men, takes 35 seconds to get through, right? It's about the longer lasting responsibility that that act entails. And God knew it. God right away said, this is something that it needs to be held as holy. This is something that needs to be done as a glorification. And we don't. We don't, we don't glorify. We sully it by our irresponsibility in how we deal with it yeah uh you know uh, what uh was uh sex was uh supposed to be uh you no know, according to biblical standards uh is uh the act between a man and a woman uh to replicate uh god's image throughout the earth you know and of course um we look back uh to what you were saying uh earlier just uh you know when we talk about sex today you know i think it simply starts with the lack of education 
of about sex, you know, the um, importance of what it really means. And, uh, you know, of course, when we're talking about uh, impoverished communities, whether it's white or black, you know, I think just the education is missing. You know, of course, like, uh, you know, we can see uh, these things uh, prominent in bigger cities, but you go to a place like Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, you'll see the same thing uh, in the white community. So it's not yeah. just a, because yeah. uh, as a whole, we know, no stats show as a whole, we know that there's more white people on welfare than black. And, but, you know, the thing is, you know, now it's like uh, people are saying that, oh, uh, you know, they'll say that the black, uh, black people have black women have babies for the sole purpose of uh, receiving welfare. I say it's, 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 it's a, it's a laughing. I can, you can laugh at it with pain because of the lack of a, uh, you have to have like a bird's eye view of the thing. You know, when you're living in these uh, impoverished communities, right, there's no resource. There's no uh, education. Uh, there's no hope. What else is it to do but mess around? <laughs> what else? Is, you, you, you do it out of boredom. I know you what know, we you, can you, do you, right now. You, Whoa, what you, man wouldn't go for that? Come and, on. And, you know, and, and it's kind of like, again, it's like out of boredom, out of education. It's out of, you know, out of a... Uh, out of not having enough exposure to do something different. You know, when you uh, fill your time with uh, things of uh, self building or biblical knowledge or spiritual growth or something like that, it, it takes away those physical urges, you know, and of course that's where I think it starts, you know, the lack of it. And I think these things, and again, just me personally, I think these things are systematic and deliberately done. Uh, the resources are taken out of uh, black communities, uh, like you see, uh, you drive around Chicago, you drive around Milwaukee. Uh, there's really uh, no clinics anymore. Uh, and of course, this whole thing against Planned Parenthood, this attack on them where they are were first forced to close a lot of their things. And then, of course, uh, since there's no education and then, of course, like sex education has uh, stopped being talked about as uh, sex between a man and a woman. But it become more of a sexuality thing or uh, sexual identity thing than actual uh, education of sex. And then, of course, even going beyond sex, the, the, the like you said, the responsibility of the, the act. There is a strong chance that you will have a baby or you will get pregnant. And then it's like, then what? But again, it starts in the church because now, you know, things have become so secular that, you know, the Bible says, you know, uh, you know he's a, God is against fornication, meaning premarital sex or people uh, that's not married living together. Hey, let's face it, because we all have done it. You know, thing is, you know, prior to our knowledge in the Bible, we all had sex without before marriage. Both my sons were born <laughs> out of wedlock or before I was married. And the thing is, I didn't know the truth then. But now that I know the truth, I know that it's wrong to do. Yes, I've changed my values. I've changed my lifestyle. I've changed uh, just my overall view on the matter. And the thing is, in the church today, you make it okay to do what you want to do. Like humanism, it says, hey, do whatever feels good to you. And uh, that goes against the knowledge of God. But, you know, and the thing is, though, uh, when it comes to sex and particularly sex in the black community, Yes, uh, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say a matter of, uh, it's, it's a, again, out of boredom, you know, lack of education, lack of exposure to new things. Uh, you have, uh, like, say, you, you may have too much time on your hand because, again, all these things come down to a boiling point of the haves and have nots, right? You wow. know, uh, I, I can't get a bus pass. To, the jobs that are available are miles away from where I live. You know, then, of course, uh, I have two I have two children already. So in order for me to take this job, you know, of course, that black woman, she wants to take that job. But, you know, the thing is now it's child care. Then, of course, you're battling and, and just I've seen this with my own eyes, you know, where you no know, women, white and black, they battle with these uh state agencies over benefits. Well, if you do this, you can't have that. Uh, if you do this, you can't, if you, if you go to work, we're going to cut your pay. Uh, if you go to work, unfortunately, we can't give you this. We can only give you this for childcare. It's, it's always that thing that stops the full blown growth. And I think it's by, I believe it's by design. And so when well, we're yeah, talking it about sex, you know, how can it not be by design when it incentivizes staying 
in that situation. I mean, we've, you've talked about and, that before, how there, it's also incentivization to not have the father live at home. So we talk about, you exactly. know, all these kids that are growing up without dads. Well, our programs for supporting the kids incentivize that. And let's face it, even with the, with the fathers working and being a part of the home, they still are at the lowest level of wage earning many, 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 many times. And, le and let's just not even talk about that spectrum for a moment. Let's talk about the spectrum of our church. And, you know, both, uh, you know, Antoine and I talk enough about God from a perspective of we're not people that haven't run through the Bible a couple of times, okay? Um, it, it is a wonderful work, and it is a living word of God. And if you don't accept that as a, re a reasonable hypothesis, read it yourself, until you know and have read it from cover to cover, you won't understand what that means. So, okay, that out of the way. What I am against against, against and will be against is religiosity, because religiosity has been pharisaical since way before Jesus' time, where there's a set of things that have been decided upon as being the way to behave, it's, you know, it's a code of behavior, a code of ethics, a code of morality and propriety. And that, that when you think that that's what makes you closer to God and believe that those things are what make you closer to God, you are completely missing the boat because Jesus Christ is the, the way to God. It's the, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's not, it's not trying to say friends of mine, listeners that are Muslim, need to, you know, I'm not judging. I can't judge. It's not my job to judge. But I say all that because there are plenty of instances in which Christian men have not for any other purpose than because they lust after someone who is not their wife, who is attractive in some way, who says the right things to them and, you know, it takes advantage of their personal vulnerabilities, who is availing themselves and it could be a man just as easily as it could be a woman who is dissatisfied in their marriage. And oh my gosh, doesn't it happen periodically that they are leaders, pastors, head pastors, Willow Creek, the Bakers, Jimmy Swaggart. We, have, we are replete, replete with examples in contemporary society that are men of God that have succumbed to something that is so powerful. And that's what we need to realize. Sexuality is so powerful in the desire for what sex provides. And, it, you know, we can go into that if you want, too, about the whole power play that's you know, present in sexuality, in sex with people. But let's not go there quite yet. Um, the, the thing that really gets me with all that is we don't realize that this is not a black and white problem. This is not a black people are, you know, bad because they do this. We all get hung up on sex and we all want to treat it like it's, you know, you're such a dirty person for doing that. No, you know, it's education. It's accountability. When a, when a religious leader can say things like you don't understand because you're not at the spiritual level that I'm at, you know, that I, this is okay for me because of where I'm at with my spiritual walk. That's nothing more than arrogance. Come on. And where are the people, where are the Christian brothers and sisters that sit and say, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't get to pull that card on me. No, no, let's, let's look at the Bible together. Okay, and you show me your advanced spirituality and how that holds up in the context of this verse and this verse and this verse. Yeah, how is that consistent? You know, the Bible says... Yeah, that uh, God is not a respect of persons, right? Right. And so we are to all treat people the same. And of course, when it comes to leaders in the church having sex, I would be with uh, lay members. That is uh, the ultimate no, no. You know, and but the thing is, you know, of course, like, uh, again, the Bible cont continuously talks about particularly uh, the Apostle Paul. Uh, talks about, you know, uh, living in the spirit and not in the flesh, you know, and that's where uh, a lot of uh, things go wrong. Uh, of course, no, the Bible tells us, hey, there's no temptation that's not common to man and the Lord will make a way out of it. You know, but the thing is, you know, we succumb to lustful desires. He said when we, the Bible also says when we let ourselves go to lustful desires, that's where sin abounds. 
And but the thing is, when it comes to those things, it comes back to the education piece. You know, of course, that's why you see the breakdown in the country as a whole. You know, it's going to start with the individual. You know, it's going to start with the family. And of course, the family structure these days has changed. You know, it's no longer the man and the wife living in the home together. It's uh, it's no a single parent. It's uh, two of the same sex. Or it's a, a dysfunctional man and woman living together, and they're young. They are very, they're getting younger and younger. And so what it is, there's no education there. And so what happens? You know, there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of, you, know, you heard that old uh, adage, you know, people, a lot of couples, they fight and the other F word. Yeah. <laughs> that's all they do. That's all, that's all they do is fight and the other let, F word. What that's, could that that, that, it's only rhymes with truck. No all, doubt. So uh. that's, that's all they do. And again, it comes back to lack of education it comes to lack of resources. It comes to, you know, just uh, not knowing lack of uh, exposure. Um, and again, it starts in the individual. It starts in the family. Then of course it starts in the community and then it leads right back to the church. And you it know, perpetuates it's, like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. And, yeah. and, and that's where, you know, you start to see the, you know, lately you are starting to see the biggest melting pot of problems, uh, the division in the church, you know, and of course now uh, from a standpoint of ministry where my wife and I are, it is getting harder and harder to, dis- I won't say this, I won't say it. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to disciple people because they see how the church behaves now. Right. Or that's what they see is the image of how the church behaves. You know, so like, but instead, it's like, you know how they say it with, uh, oh, it's one, ba-, like with the bad cops. It's one bad, don't let one bad apple destroy the whole bunch. The same applies to churches. You know, like, yes, you see what you see on TV and the news, but you can't put us all in the same boat. Right. And, you right. know, of course, like, uh, you know, and as a practice in my ministry is, you know, men minister to men and women minister to women. A woman will come to me with something. I'll say, hey, let's talk to my wife or I'll send her to one of uh, Minister Tunisia or uh, Pastor Luann. I'll send them there. And same with uh, men coming to my wife or one of the other lady uh, people in authority or in position in our ministry. That's how we do things to minimize that very thing, because we've seen it happen real time with our own eyes where a lead pastor or pastor has uh, had an adulterous affair with one of his members of his church. We've seen it. Right. And that's an, also another reason why my wife and I, we go out in twos. You, you, you rarely see me without my wife. <laughs> you rarely see me without my wife. And, and it's just because uh, you see these things and uh, say that, you know, we thank God for Jehovah Nisi, who is our banner, our protector. He protects us against the world. He protects us against our f- own flesh. <laughs> he protects us against our minds. <laughs> he fights this battle for us. But, you know, when we're talking about sex in the church is very real. You know, of course, like, you know, we a, a lot of uh, pastors dismiss uh talking about the things that hurt the heart of God. And that is the look at Romans one starting around verse 16, all the way through the end. And then of course he's talking about fornication, uh, same sex stuff. He's talking about just having a wrong mind. And he says, if you continue these things, I'll leave you to a rapidate mind to do those things that are not convenient for you. Now me as a person, just me as a pastor, I'll say this. I believe every single word of the Bible pertaining to every single area of life. And I strongly believe when the Bible says in Luke six, starting around verse 30, that I am not a judge. I am not a judge. And so it's like, regardless of what a person does or has done, we love them. How can, because whether it's a, because I've seen churches shun a single mother because oh, she had a baby without a husband. And so she can't participate in church activities or she shows up pregnant and she's not married. But so the church shuns her. That is, uh, oh my goodness. You know, it's like you basically turn away someone that's seeking God. And that's what uh, G- Jesus, when he ripped the Pharisees apart, he was saying, hey, uh, people are trying to enter the kingdom of God and you won't stop them and you yourself won't even come in. And so it's like, we are not judges. We love people because deliverance only comes by love. And so when we can get to a space of love 
it'll diminish a lot of the problems that we have in this world today. You know, whether it's the preconceived notions, whether it's uh, the misinformation, the disinformation, the misconceptions, the flat out lies. <sighs> yeah. When we start loving people, uh, we'll get to the root of er- love is the lack of love is at the root of every problem. Well, and this problem of pro-life versus pro-choice, you know, pro-birth, really pro, you know, women's rights versus, you know, pro-life. Um, there, there are all those um, complex interactions of behavior and needs, and all of them boil down to lack of love. You know, when it, when it comes down to we as a church have caused the problems that there are in this promiscuity issue and this sex issue and the issue of, you know, who, who has the right to their own body, we have caused that by for hundreds of years, if not thousands, treating women and men who were, didn't have a right understanding of sex or who put into a situation, as you know, say, you know, they can't even afford Netflix, you know, so what are they going to do? Um, you know, it just, there's only so much time in the day, and, uh, you know, if I had the, di- the difference between you know, sitting on the couch and watching television and having sex with my wife, I know what would win 100% of the time. But, you know, we're also in a position that because we're married, if something happens, um, you know, we can do the right thing for that baby. And yes, there's and again, just so many uh, ways uh, to treat that, right? And it's yes, complex because it, it all comes down to, well, where are the support people for that? That's you can say, it, it, how can I help it, you? It, exactly. And so it's like the support should be coming in before the child is even conceived. Again, the, yeah. the lack yeah. of education, the lack of resources, because, uh, again, when you have education, you, with the education comes better decisions. And, you know, with those better decisions, you know, comes a, a, a change in trajectory in your life. And, you know, and of course, better it's uh, unfortunate that uh, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, things that affect that. And again, it's like, uh, you know, we were talking, we were talking about Black Lives Matter, you know, and of course, that's what they are fighting, the systematic and targeted demise of black people, you know, and that's where, you know, again, a lot of resources, a lot of education, a lot of uh, things are being taken out of clinics, Mm -hmm. you know, are being taken away out of community, you got to travel X amount of way, or you go to a space and you get mistreated so bad that you don't want to go back. It, or you it, make it, it more perpetuates. necessary to have that baby. I mean, you just, what are you going to do? So that perpetuates, and, makes the property and greater, then, makes the, chi- the and, children's and, lives hor- more horrible. And even if, a, and even if a, uh, say, a young couple decided to have an abortion, there's no money to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Right. There's no money to pay for it. Right. And, you know, so it's like, Again, uh, the problems, uh, again, they all stem back to you know, the have and have nots, you know, that uh, poverty stricken areas. Uh, yes, you're going to see more children, then you're going to see more poverty. Uh, you're going to see more hungry children. And then again, it's like it's just like this perpetual hole that's being dug. And then, of course, like, you know, we're talking about the uh, distribution of wealth in the country. No one, uh, everyone's saying they hate the uh, most people are saying like uh, they're just doing it to stay on welfare. I, I, I don't. I, I've known some to do that, yes, but I know, we also know in my ministry, my wife and I's ministry, because one of her, her ministry is Shine, uh, and she deals with teen, uh, you no know, BIPOC, you no know, Black Indigenous people of color, women. She deals with uh, Black, even in, in the show, she also deals with uh, low income white women. And the struggle is the same lack of resources, lack of education. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's perpetuated and, and it's uh, I think it's deliberate. And, you know, of course, and then it's like only one side of the problem is actually pointed out. Oh, well, they're having babies to stay on welfare. No, they stay on. It's like we know women in our ministry are saying that want change. They want they want to change. And then unfortunately, like in most uh, impoverished communities, uh, the family structure is so messed up that, you know, it's hard to find a babysitter or you don't trust your baby with certain people. You know what I mean? So right. you're, you're stuck. Right. You are just stuck. And, and and it's like there's no hope. And then that's why you see the suicide rate where it is, you know, because people are losing hope and People that there, like you said, this is the richest country in the world. There's no way that you no know, the 
the way some people live in certain areas of the country should be living. Right. And, and it's right. just, uh, again, and then so like when you have a group like Black Lives Matter that points these things out, they are targeted and, and, and it's now it's reverse racism. It's, uh, you know, oh, uh, white lives matter, too. And it's like, oh, you say all lives matter. Then, of course, it's just like, well, if all lives matter, then there would be no need for black lives matter. Then it just it's just it's almost like you, you pick a fight to take your focus off the bigger problem. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Of course. And that's where of we, course. that's where we are. And, and then, of course, even like, in this you know, discussion, we're, where are the even, people having yeah. this discussion? Right. Yeah. You know, and it's like, uh, man, it's like, uh, you know, you, you, you when you expose a problem, when you when you expose the issue, you become the problem. And that's where we are. And it's like, you know, when uh, now that the fact that uh, there's a young, uh, young uh, Caucasian or young white people wanting to know more back about. Black history, they are now being targeted. They are now now it's like this woke thing, this and that and the other. It's like I wish people would just wake up and and understand that the spirit of division is real. Uh, they got to understand that thing. This is a spiritual battle, you know, and that's where we really need to get people. Like I said, that's what we were talking about the church. There's so much things going on in the church that people are doing churchy things, thinking that they are going to be saved. It's all oh, if I join this group, if I join that group, if I do, if I join a choir, if I join that, that doesn't get you saved. Because when people start joining all these different things and saying, oh, well, I'm a part of this at the church. I'm a part of that at the church. I do this at the church. You're basically saying, oh, well, these are the things that I need to take to get me saved when it actually is Jesus Christ who saves you. And if it's him who saves you, if he's your salvation, if he's your redeemer, if he's your trust, then you would uh, live according to his principles the best that you can. Because again, we all fall short of the glory of God. But if we're trying our best to strive to have that Christ-like mindedness, a lot of these things wouldn't exist. But of course, you know, in the church now, we got churches actually that have a uh, militias. You know, there's uh, white churches in the South that have militias. They're teaching the wrong things. And, of course, the church used to be the beacon, beacon of the community. People that needed help would actually run to the church for help. But now the church is a hookup spot. The church is a resource center. The church is a networking event. You know, every, every, everybody come to church but for the reason to know Jesus. And that's where, uh, you know, I, it's, it's a sad day that, you know, of course, again, individual family, community, church, and then you got town, city, village, state, country, and that's where we are. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, the church, um, yeah, of course, uh, I, I love the body of Christ. Uh, I love them all, but, uh, there's a group that is, uh, perpetuating that they're not perpetuating the na very nature of Christ. Well, and so we argue about the wrong when we're, things too. Exactly. And so that's where, you know, again, a lot of these things stem from, you know, of course, like you talk about community resources, but then you also talk about the church teaching the right things. And of course, you know, we as FaithWorks Ministries, you know, we when we, we have these uh, other groups to teach uh, about life and finance and things like that. But it's like before it's like when depending on the person and where they are in their life. You got to teach them about Jesus first, because, again, it's like when they know Jesus and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost comes upon or the Holy Spirit becomes a part of their lives or comes into them. And he will guide them into all truth is what we hope and pray for. And so it's just uh, we yeah. what, uh... we have to get back to the basics of teaching, because, again, like parents are getting younger and younger, like uh, grandparents are now grandparents, when you say grandma, right, you used to think, oh, 70, 60, 70, 80-year-old grandma. Grandma is now 28, 29 years old. And, and the, the life lessons that used to be handed down got lost. And so you see Seriously, that. Seriously, 28 or 29, eyes. you've seen that young. So that means the kids uh, are having sex at 12, for God's sakes. 12, 13, 14, yep. And wow. uh, that's where we are. And then the 28-year-old grandmama, she didn't have the knowledge that, you know, again, it started to get younger and younger. She had to have kids that's at what we six, are. 15, 16, 14 herself, you know. So and that's, uh, she, you know, yep, that's again, not even talking about life. generational rape, which is a whole other spectrum of problems that causes the same physical problem. 
Um, but it's again that generational uh, lack of education, the, gen- the the lack of resources, uh, the the lack of exposure to new exciting things, and that's what my wife and I try to do with these uh, young people is expose them to new things. We try to talk about places, you know, like what do you, like you know besides, you know, of course, it's easy to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Then it's like you have to take it a step deeper. R- really, where would you like to live? How would you like to live? What do you do? You, do you see yourself with children later on in life? You know, do you see uh, yourself in a different? What do you love to do? What What do you see yourself? And that and you try to spark some thought. You try to spark some uh, something within them to make them strive to want to be better. Some hope. And then you it, and then you bring in some subject matter experts to speak on certain things to again to give them hope. You know, and of course, my wife and I's lives, you know, we can talk, we share our darkest, dirtiest testimonies to show a kid that, hey, just because you were born into a situation doesn't mean you have to end up there. And that's the same with, uh, you know, with uh, the single mothers. You know, we uh, you know there's a doctor, you know, I can't remember her name. We we talked to her. She had we talked when we were uh, in the Baraboo Church. When we were at uh, before uh, the church soul, we had her come in from Illinois. She was a single mother of three. And uh, she dug, she put her claws in, dug her way out of poverty and went, started going to school. She was working and going to school, taking care of three kids. And she became a doctor, well, a psychologist. Okay. But she did it. And so we had her come and talk to the young Native American women and the black women, as well as the the, the low income white women that were in the community. And uh, we've seen the fruit of that. You know, it's like a young a lot of these young ladies have gone off to college. Uh, one member of our church, she's uh, about to go into UW Oshkosh as a freshman. And it's like, man, look right. at that. Look at God, you know, just uh, with the right resources, the right education, you can change lives. The right and, compassion, uh, that's we are. the right love, there we go. the right caring. I mean, if we How otherwise them and say those dirty black people, <laughs> they're just a bunch of sex animals. You know, I mean, do you knock up when our little small community here, we have people living out of their vans and 90% of them are single women living with their kids that they don't have a support structure to live and work and make enough money to have a decent house. They have to live out of their cars and their vans. Do we, why don't we go up and knock on their windows as, you know, Christian believers, just knock and say, you know, you wouldn't be in this position if you had been less promiscuous or more forgiving of your husband or whatever. I mean, there are reasons, whatever we have in our brain, instead of being compassionate, like a lot of the members in our community, to their credit, are they're trying to do something to help those people. They're trying to do like your ministry is, trying to help ways that they can do things that will give some hope, that will give the people that are in those positions a reason to believe that someone else gives a darn about them and wants a better thing for them, wants to help them achieve. And as you're saying, right, what do you, what do you see yourself as? Well, a lot of these kids don't see themselves as anything except trash. You know, just we're trash that can be thrown away by the rest of the world. And there's no one out there that's going to help me. No one cares. So why should I, why, why does it matter? I might as well have sex. At least I feel good for, you know, a couple minutes. That's something better than I have otherwise. Or they're just, you know, what other thing do I have? Except at least if I do this, that's, I could get a little more money. Maybe we could afford a par- an apartment. That's all they know. My all sister know had multiple us. kids and, you know, ended up, she had a husband that was abusive and left her. You know, she actually kicked him out because he was so abusive. And then she, all she had was aid for, you know, for children with uh, dependent children. So she lived on a- AFDC, and because of that, all, didn't have the time or the resources to learn a, a trade. So when those kids were finally all gone, she didn't have that money coming in. She had to take jobs as, you know, she worked at a motel, you know, cleaning things. She could do that. Um, but I don't know if any of you have tried to have that kind of job and live on the pay scale that those jobs, you know, afford to pay or, you know, warrant to pay. You can't live with on, you know, the, where's the rent that's going to be affordable? Where are the vehicles that are going to be affordable to be able to get you reliably back and forth to work? Where are the, you know, groceries that need to be put on the table? How do you afford all that? I've done studies of that. If you make, you know, even $15 an hour, which you're pushing for, you know, to be the new minimum wage and getting pushed back on it. 
even at $15 an hour. When you start looking at all the things that a person needs to have in order to get along, you know, and when you can say to people that you'll make more money, you'll have a better lifestyle by having more kids. And and that's where people turn, like you said, the compassion piece, people turn a blind eye. So like, what do, what do people do? What do cities and towns and state do? They'll uh, start, they say, oh, we, we're, we're going to build some housing, right? But it's not affordable housing. And so what do they do? They bl- they turn a blind eye by pricing people right out of their community. Yeah. You know, I've seen that right. in the town that I lived in. Uh, I look at Baraboo, you know, uh, they're pricing people right out of the community. Uh, you know, like all, all these great new apartments are coming up, but no one can afford them on 15 bucks an hour. Right. And, you know, and so, and so it's like if you don't see the problem, there is no problem. Or if you because people take blind eyes to such things as poverty, because uh, if you poverty, homelessness, hunger, you know, you turn a blind eye to it because if you see it as a city, state, municipality, you got to address it. And when, and when you got to address it, that means it's going to cost you money. And then of course, uh, depending on who's on the, the city, state governing boards or who's the mayor or whoever, whatever, they have other agendas. Oh, we want to build this. We want to do that. You know, and it's, and, but everything, but acknowledged uh, the poor and impoverished, uh, you know, the Bible says, hey, you know, we need to t- look after the widow and the poor and the fatherless. We have to look after them. But people in th- this, these are towns and places where there's like 50 churches, but yet no one really wants to do a thing about it. You know, um, and the people that do want to do something about it are so few and, you know, are are sometimes even misdirected themselves in terms of what the best thing to do is, you know, what would I'll help. Tell you what. Where are the groups of homeless people that are, you know, consulted as a focus group, if you will, you know, what would help the most? Exactly. You you don't, that's, that's a great point. There's always focus groups on poverty, but no majority of those focus uh, group participants aren't actually uh, in it. You know, they can testify to what they've seen or I know someone there may be a couple sprinkled in there, but you know, it's like, I tell you, one of our biggest struggles is, uh, you know, as a ministry is financial help. You know, uh, of course, a lot of people, these corporate donors, they give to these uh, major things. But and we're saying, hey, you know, we want to provide for the homeless. We want to provide. You no, know, we want to address hunger. We want to address homelessness. We want to address uh, these issues. You know, like, again, like with uh, social, racial, economic inequalities, we want to address these issues. But, you know, what? they know they're 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 uh, out when it comes to giving us or donating money to us. Well, you're a church. <laughs> And again, it's like if you look in it's like I'm I'm taking my bylaws, our church bylaws everywhere. Like, look, this is written into our bylaws, what we do. We're not a church. We're a ministry. And of course, a lot of people have a different different uh, problem differentiating ministry, uh, outreach ministry and a church. And so that's their out from giving us money. Like, you know, uh, you know, just people can donate tens of thousands of dollars uh, to the zoo. But, you know, and then they'll give a few hundred bucks to homeless people. And uh, I have a problem with that. And so, you know, of course, I, I can't I won't call people out by name, but I know of people that do that. You know, they'll give tens of thousands of dollars to zoos and uh, art museums and all these different kinds of things that are, you know, but they won't they'll give very minimal to people in need. Yeah. And again, um and that's sad, you know, and, you know, even when it comes to grants for these things, the grants go to the same people now, you know, of course, like a, they, they're putting a loophole in grants where it says, oh, these are reimbursable grants, meaning that you buy or pay for something and then we'll reimburse you. If we had ten thousand dollars to put a program in place, we wouldn't need the grant, you know, so that again, it's like these uh, syst- systemic and systematic ways of uh, pushing Black, minority, even low-income white people to the bottom or out of the picture. Uh, and so is and again, what what do you do when you uh, are when the doors have been shut? It's just you and your old lady laying in a apartment that y'all about to get kicked out of. Y'all go mess around. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 do you what what are you gonna do? And 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 it's and it's almost it's like not for the sake of even having you know because again it's a lot of homeless women with children that don't even qualify for AFDC uh, because uh, they don't have the proper address or they can't get the proper identification or what it's all is something that would uh, it's few things that prohibit, but 
there's a few that don't qualify. Yeah. And so, and it's like, uh, <sighs> and it's, it's just a sad thing. So, you know, um, we, again, uh, addressing the root cause, you know, of a matter, which is a uh, resources education, you know, in a non-discriminate you know, thing. Well, you know, as always, when we start these conversations, and today, if you've missed it, we've been talking about S-E-X. That's right, S-E-X. So this can be now called the sex episode, which, you know, they'd say in Hollywood, the things to really get people going, you got to have sex and you got to have dogs. You want people to watch, you got to have those two things. So maybe we'll talk about dogs sometime, but uh, as always, those conversations are not as simple as the thing, the word itself. Um, you know, I, I, I hope, I think we've touched on a whole bunch of the surface things that each one of those is a topic um, in itself. But there's, yes. it's, it's not as simple as just, oh, those people need to keep their zipper shut. Or, oh, those people need to realize that, you know, I work for a living too. Or those people, you know, again, it, those people. There's the problem right there, too. Those people instead of Cassandra, instead of, you know, Lily, instead of Anne, whatever. You know, Anne, have you, have you met Anne and her, her little baby, Chuck, little Chucky? He's the cutest thing. Yeah, she, they don't have a, she doesn't have a dad. The dad isn't with them anymore. Oh, my. How can we help? No, oh, that's far too often. That is not the response to that thing. Far too often. Well, and they should have, could have, would have, right? Yeah, they should have did this. They could have, and it's like, yeah, it's like if they were afforded that education again, just uh, resources and education leads to better decisions. Mm -hmm. And you know, and of course, when education and resources are taken away from people, you know, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna lead to another path. And of course, and of course, when we're talking about sex, just uh, boy, the flesh is something else. The mm -hmm. flesh leads us to do some really bad things, you know. And not just sex. And let's just say, right? Just just say, uh, really, uh, I guess when really you're having really good sex, right, it's mm -hmm. gonna lead to people doing some really bad things to get that, you know. And of course, uh, you know, the old adages and old jokes. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say again, but it's just simply. <laughs> Sex is has can be used as a weapon on both sides, mm -hmm. men and women. They mm -hmm. use it for they use it to get what they want and need. And of course, uh, sex is to be enjoyed uh, in a responsible manner. Um, and that's where you know the oldest I think profession it's just, in the uh, world. So yeah, yeah it's, it, it's sometimes if, if sex is a profession to some, you know, in a. Because again, we're talking about people living, people living in the flesh and not in the spirit. Corporate world. And uh, it's all use it. Mm -hmm. It's all it's a church. <laughs> As always, so another rousing mm -hmm. talk that you know hopefully it spurs people to have talk about how big the problem is and what the real yeah. roots of it are. And if we're wrong, I'm willing to talk with anyone that doesn't agree. It's a great chance we are, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what <laughs> a we, great chance we, we are all the time. Just I'm, you know, I'm just a guy with an opinion. But you know, check it out. Check out if my opinions hold water. Check out if if Antoine's opinions hold water. That's the real test. We used to say proof is in the pudding, yeah. right? So look at the pudding. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, re research for yourself. Yeah. Research for yourself. We have this thing called the internet now. I hear the in the internet thing that you know. You don't believe everything on the internet, do some research. It's not just one source. It's not Carl thinks or Raul thinks. It's not. It's about, you know, looking at the big picture and thinking about the big picture always. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Hopefully some things resonate with you, uh, right? So, all right. Antoine, always, always one of the best parts of my day is getting to have these talks with you. So here on That's Frame of Reference here, coming brother. together. So, and uh, I'm Raul LeBrush. Antoine Hallman Sr. Hey, we're getting the thing, right? We're going to get that. It's going to yeah, be like, yeah, yeah I'm Raul LaBrash. And, you know, we, we can develop yeah. some kind of personality or something. Get some yeah. hyped up. <laughs> so, hey, man, you have a good day, okay? You too, man. Thank you. Thank you. You as well, man. Uh, just uh, love and prayers are always to you and your family, man. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. And you as well. You give my best to Ramona and uh, hope everything goes well. And you have a great week and a great weekend. And... Uh, Folks, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching us on Frame of Reference. 
And uh, we hope, like I said, hope it gets you thinking and talking. That's really what I think it's all about. Peace for me. What's it about? It's about for you seeing me and my stupid beard? I don't know. What? what? <laughs> uh, 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 more than that, probably, huh? So, thanks, brother. Take care. See you next week. Hey, you too, man. Thank you.